untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic gameplay video. It's been a while since we've covered Historic, but it's always nice to kind of check in and see which decks are performing well. And right now, Red White Thopter Tribal is actually the highest win rate deck in the meta, which is a bit surprising, but part of it is the printing of a Retrofitter Foundry, a one-mana artifact that we kind of have to read the last ability first. We can tap it, sacrifice a Thopter to create a 4-4 colorless construct artifact creature token, which is this one. So Retrofitter Foundry can make a 4-4 as early as turn 1 in this deck. If we combine it with Ornithopter, we can take a look at all the Thopter cards in this deck, and there's quite a few of them. And Yotia declares war, another reason why this deck has taken off, adding another Thopter generator to the deck, and then eventually also giving us a bit of removal on chapter 2, as we can tap any number of untapped artifacts we control to deal that much damage to a creature or planeswalker, and eventually transforms one of our artifacts into a 4-4 as well. So Foundry can make lots of 4 4 in this deck, can make servo tokens for 2 mana if we tap it, and then maybe sacrifice a servo for 1 mana to turn it into a Thopter, which can then turn into a 4-4, which is a pretty lengthy process, but for the most part Foundry is just turning Thopters into 4-4s, which can start beating down. And then the other Thopters include Hope of Girapur, a 1-1 legendary Thopter with flying, that when it hits the opponent we can sacrifice it, and then prevent the opponent from casting non-creature spells in their next turn, which can be useful against some strategies, and then also combines nicely with Allurus, which is our companion, which lets us replay a 1 or 2 drop from our graveyard each turn, and that's also the reason why our curve tops out at 2 mana, and we're not playing cards like Nettle Cyst, which could be powerful additions if we don't play the companion, but Lurus can be quite powerful, especially with the Declares War Saga, which can start from any chapter, so we can maybe start from chapter 2 right away to keep using it as removal over and over again every two turns, and if we ever get a second copy in the graveyard, we can essentially kill a creature every turn with Lurus, which can be very helpful in a matchup like Elves, where the opponent is not going to have an answer for Lurus, but we need to make sure we can keep up with the opponent's Lords. And then our author Thopter is Barbed Spike, not particularly exciting as a 2-mana equipment that comes attached to a 1-1 Thopter token, giving it 1 extra power, but it does still synergize nicely with our Foundry, of course, and also adds 2 artifacts to the board, which will also help increase the power of Reign of Truth, giving a creature plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn for each artifact and or enchantment we control. So another great synergy with Declares War, which will add an artifact and an enchantment to the battlefield, which can significantly increase the power of Reign of Truth, which also works nicely with Ornithopter as another free creature we can play alongside it to increase our count. And then we also have a bit of removal with four copies of Portable Hole and two copies of a Glass Casket to deal with opposing creatures alongside our Saga. And then Esper Sentinel, of course, another staple in any white artifact-based deck, making the opponent spend extra mana when they cast non-creature spells, otherwise we get to draw a card. And then we also have two copies of Shadow Spear to give lifelink, trample, and plus one plus one. Can also be very nice alongside Reign of Truth if we need to get past any potential blockers, and can also help us win any racing situation. And then four copies of Ingenious Smith to kind of round out the deck as another nice source of card advantage. Can help us find our various combo pieces like Retrofitter Foundry, which is of course the key card in this deck that we would like to have in each opening hand if possible. But it can even find some lands, artifact lands like Darksteel Citadel, and our two copies of Rust Veil Bridge, which are indestructible lands, so we can also potentially animate them with the final chapter of Declares War, and we don't need to fear any removal spells, at least most removal spells won't be able to deal with indestructible creatures, so there's a ton of synergy there too, and all these artifacts can also help grow the Ingenious Smith, can even wait until the opponent's turn to use our Foundry to sacrifice a Thopter to make a 4-4, that way we can pick up an extra counter with Ingenious Smith, which is limited to one per turn, but also counts the opponent's turn. So there's a ton of neat interactions there, and then the rest of our mana base, simply lots of red-white dual lands for fixing, and an Igancho, which can also be channeled as additional interaction. Some other Thopter tribal decks like to include Toolcraft Exemplar as another aggressive one-drop. I found it to be a little bit low impact, and according to the stats, it's also one of the worst performing cards in the deck, so we'll try without it, but just know that it's an extra option that you have available. But for now, let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not particularly exciting. Sentinel's good, and then if our opponent's a creature deck, I guess double portable hole will help. Yeah, might still be worth a keep if we find Foundry. Our hand's pretty decent. 
Anna declares war will be decent too. Alright, opponent on a Angel Life Gain deck. So Sentinel's not going to be great for now. Could be fine to play Hope of Girapur to just offer the trade for Speaker, since I want to keep Portable Hole for cards like Jada. And probably no real downside to playing Ornithopter now, because the opponent has cards like Soul Warden. Alright, there's Jada, so that's going to be the target of Portable Hole. And then we can still maybe play Sentinel before they get a chance to cast Collected Company. Alright, there's Foundry, that's exciting. So we can exile Jada. Attack with Hope. And Foundry represents a 4-4 end of turn. Best case scenario, your opponent doesn't read Foundry and attacks with the Speaker of the Heavens. Alright, perfect. I guess we'll still keep our Hope of Girapur around, just sacrifice Ornithopter. And that's the advantage of playing a lesser known card. Back of Jada. We can put in the hole or we can declare war. Starting from chapter 2. And then I'll just tap Hope and Portable Hole. So I can still attack and use Foundry to make another 4-4. There is part of me that maybe would rather use Portable Hole to answer Jada, since Declares War can maybe answer a 3 or 4 drop. But we'll try this approach. Alright, Company. I think I let that happen if they have a Skyclave Apparition. I guess it would probably go for Foundry anyways, or a Portable Hole. Right, Skyclave and Overseer could have been worse. And they're gonna try and get back Jada, which we will get rid of here with the second hole. Opponent gaining some life. Back up to 19. Does a veteran attack, or did they learn their lesson? Alright. So let us target probably the Citadel here. And then attack for 12. Could portable hold Jada first. Probably no need to give them that information. Opponent takes it. Could also play Barbed Spike to make another 4-4. Four, four. I think... Dealing with Jada is probably the safer play. Resplendent Angel luckily doesn't gain enough life to make another Angel token end of turn. And a Glass Casket can also answer it here. Yeah, I guess exiling Resplendent Angel is fine. And attack for 8. Opponent will have to chump. Double block makes sense. And we'll get a 1-1 token in return. Opponent needs a big collected company here to stabilize. Another resplendent angel we can still attack into. Another foundry doesn't really help. So barbed spike over put lures in hand I think. And then it's two mana to re-equip, so that's not gonna happen. Just hit for four. If I attack with everyone, then I guess I force them to trade for veteran. Don't think that's necessary. Put on chumps anyways. And then I guess I could have played another foundry. Probably doesn't make a huge difference. Opponent growing the angel, but we actually have a pretty neat trick up our sleeves here to prevent the opponent from gaining any life. Jump with the Thopter, sacrifice it. Opponent doesn't get an angel token, doesn't gain any life. And we kill them on the way back. Sweet. On to the next one. Uh, 
Okay, we're on the draw. And the four lander is maybe a little bit much. I do like the rest of my hands, but uh, yeah, I don't think we can keep a four lander. This is better. And then I think I get rid of Hope of Girapur since Ornithopter is a bit easier to deploy. And we have double Sentinel we need to play. Alright, opponent on blue-red wizards, our arch enemy. For now we can still play Sentinel. And then probably okay to run out an Ornithopter right now. Could wait. Um, yeah, I guess there's no huge incentive to play it now. Can play it next turn before maybe declares war to get an extra artifact in play that they may not expect. Opponent's gonna wizard lining pay the tax. At least we're still slowing them down. And a foundry, perfect. So play Sentinel. Play Foundry and an Ornithopter, which can turn into a 4-4. Four -four. And then next turn, got another Ornithopter coming up. If our opponent taps out for Dreadhorde Arcanist, we can still kill it by skipping to Chapter 2 right away. Alright, iteration. We get to draw off Sentinel. And a Portable Hole is excellent too. Can chum Symmetry Sage with Ornithopter before sacrificing it so we don't take any damage. Although iteration likely to find some cheap interaction or hit their land drops, which they were lacking here. So we'll see what's next. Maybe just a removal spell on Sentinel. Okay, so far so good. Get to untap. And... Uh, yeah, we can portable hole Symmetry Sage and then Declares War. We'll make it so they can't really play another creature for a turn. And that should put us pretty far ahead. And our opponent explodes, all right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Good mix of interaction and a bit of card advantage. Turn 1 Sentinel, always useful. And then declares war, plus Lurus is going to be our late game plan. Probably okay to play Smith next turn. That way Citadel will also grow it. But we'll see what our opponent does. Firebrand to answer Sentinel, perhaps. They're gonna keep it around. Alright, I mean, I should attack first to kind of force the issue here. Since they could always use a Firebrand in response. And then maybe a Smith gets to live. Opponent takes a trade. And find a portable hole. Should come in handy. There's a burning tree emissary. Is there a second copy? Just a fervent champion. That's fine. Ooh, another ingenious smith. So I could play another one. And then just playing Citadel will add a counter. Playing Hope does not, since it's limited to one per turn. So it might still be better off using a portable hole here. And then we can declare war, starting from chapter one. That seems fine. Just want to make sure we use up all our mana every turn if possible. And then I'm okay hitting for two. And 
attacks. Yeah, that's a scary one. Now I can kill it if I tap three artifacts, which is probably worth it. And then Foundry was a great draw. So that's going to be the play alongside maybe Portable Hole, which is running out of targets anyway. Hit for three, and then we can make a 4-4 four, four and instant speed. And then our hand's still pretty good. So yeah, we ended up with quite a bit of removal, which is what we needed in this matchup. Torbrand's not bad, although we can still block the 1-1, one, one. so our opponent's not too familiar with our foundry. Even grow Smith in the opponent's turn, which is not a reason to wait. Okay. Can animate one of our portable holes, probably the one with the emissary. Since I could use my mana here. Attack for 12, can activate Foundry to make a servo instant speed to present lethal. Oops, opponent did not block, but we skipped through the attack step here. That's okay, just play another Smith and we should still be able to kill them next turn. And that represents another Thopter we can sacrifice. And that will grow both Ingenious Smiths once again. Ooh, Chain Whirler, all right, that's not bad. Although luckily for us, we'll deal three total and not four. So we should still be fine. Torbran has to stay back and our opponent takes lethal. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Gigantha's companion, so it could be Wizards. And if that's the case, I like this hand a lot. We've got the Foundry, Portable Hole, and Double Declares War, so a ton of interaction, which is what we need in this matchup. And the Wizards deck doesn't typically have answers to artifacts. Balnor, okay. That can go in the hole. Or maybe more efficient to declare war first. And then next turn, we can portable hole plus another declares war. Can wait to chum block and then sacrifice. Although Balnor may gain trample, in which case it doesn't really make a difference. Right, Arcanist is kind of a must answer, so that one I will gladly put in the hole. But they may be able to give it haste first. Opponent going for Wizard's Lightning, oh no. Is their opponent also unfamiliar here with the Foundry, which can be activated at instant speed? Take two. Ingenious Smith, also nice. Alright, so we're not gonna tap anything. Now, that being said, I could declare war to deal uh, damage right away here, to deal with both creatures at once, which is probably actually worth it. Although it does mean skipping the Ornithopter stage. So, yeah, maybe we do still make an Ornithopter here and then wait until next turn to kill Belmore. Opponent considers. So chomping's not going to make a difference now. And our opponent again trying to kill our Thopter. Two cards left. Discharge going face. But we're still at a healthy 11 life. So don't feel too threatened. Can animate Foundry. And then we could kill Balmore. What if I hit for 12? Yeah, we definitely have options. Killing Balmore is the safest play, admittedly. Sure. And 
and then attack for four. Play Smith plus another declares war. And then we should have 12 next turn. Even found a glass casket as another answer. Although, in this matchup, Portable Hole's probably just better, since the Wizard's deck typically only plays 1 and 2 mana creatures. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand feels a little bit weak, although we do have lots of ways to add artifacts to the board with a turn 1 bridge, turn 2 spike, so we are setting up some powerful Michiko's Reign of Truth. So maybe it's still worth keeping on the play. But uh, yeah, we're definitely missing a few key cards. An Asper Sentinel would have been nice. And of course Foundry. But we'll see if this uh, Spike plus Truth plan works out. Opponent on a life gain deck, which can also be a tough matchup. There's Foundry, okay. So we can play that next turn. And then a Reign of Truth attack for a bunch and then still sacrifice our Thopter. So now our draw's looking a lot better. Although the life gain deck is still scary if they can get a Voice of the Blast going, for instance. So play Foundry, play Reign of Truth. And smash for 7. And then keep our Foundry at instant speed here. Maybe ambush a veteran if our opponent's not familiar with it. Skyclip, okay, probably goes for... Reign of Truth, maybe goes for Foundry. Alright, goes for Reign of Truth, so we can wait on using Foundry. And we get another free ambush. Is that the third one today? Declares War was a great draw too. Okay, so how about... Declares War, start from chapter 1, and then Reign of Truth. And see if they want to chum block or take 11. Opponent chumps. And then get a 2 2 token in return. Not sure yet if I actually want to sacrifice Ornithopter or if I keep it as a flyer to get the benefits, but I guess now with Phantom they can chum block my Thopter anyway. Put him back up to 17, but their draw hasn't been too exciting. Maybe they're missing a second caller. Okay. So I can pump my Illusion and then tap Spike to kill Phantom. This would be an attack for 17 exactly, so our opponent would already be dead on board. Sweet, and we get to rank up to Platinum. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and this could be a mirror match. In which case, Sentinel's pretty decent, and Declares War is also one of the more important cards. So we'll try it. Definitely hold one Ornithopter to play after Ingenious Smith. So it picks up a counter right away. Not sure if I want to play one on turn one anyways. And our opponent's got their own Sentinel. So very likely a mirror match. Small chance it's kind of a Spirit Dancer aura deck, but Ornithopter points more towards the Thopter tribal. And we even found a Foundry, although it's going to cost us an extra mana if we want to pay the Sentinel tax. So it's probably okay to wait a turn on it. Play a Rune Sentinel, and then probably play an Ornithopter to just block their 1-1. And then next turn I can either play Smith or pay 2 mana for Foundry. Opponents got their own Smith, so, so far we're kind of mirroring each other. Finds a Citadel. I guess I don't mind Smith and then wait a turn on uh, Foundry. Problem with Foundry 2 in this matchup is that Portable Hole can exile it, so we don't necessarily get to keep it around for long. Okay, 
Okay, found portable hole. Or we could go for a glass casket to eventually answer Lurus. I think the cheaper answer is still preferred. And then Ornithopter Grossmith. And pass. Opponent's got their own portable hole. Can't pay for the tax. Exiling Ingenious Smith, it looks like. And they've got the Foundry, which we can portable hole. Could also portable hole the portable hole to get back Ingenious Smith, which I also don't hate. So we have options. Portable hole costs two mana if we pay the tax, and then I can still play a Sentinel afterwards. Opponent will be able to make a 4 4 at instant speed. So if we want to keep up with it, I might have to play my own foundry, which I can still do if I pay the tax for portable hole on Sentinel. And our opponent concedes. That was pretty early concession, but uh, yeah, I guess they knew we had options. And once we pay the Sentinel tax once, then we're good to cast another non creature spell. So yeah, I think the play would have been portable hole, the portable hole, get back Ingenious Smith, play our own foundry. And then Smith is potentially going to find more interaction. And then we still have our Declares War to take over and lure us with Declares War. If the opponent doesn't have it, we'll easily take over the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Jigaltha, so it could be another Wizards deck. And yeah, our hand's probably okay for the matchup. No Foundry this time, but still a turn 1 Sentinel that they'll have to deal with. Although, could see myself using Portable Hole. Problem with using Portable Hole is that we wouldn't have a great answer to Potential Arcanist, which is a more threatening card. So, probably fine to play a Sentinel here. And then I'll hang on to Ornithopter to uh, maybe grow Ingenious Smith right away. Balmore could also be worth exiling. I guess Ornithopter could have soaked up one damage here, but so be it. Alrighty, so... I could declare his war and then start from Chapter 2 and play Ornithopter to kill Soulscar Mage and uh, wait to see if they have an Arcanist we need to exile. That's an option. Or I can just start from Chapter 1 and play Ornithopter and see where that leads us. Sure. We'll make it easier for the opponent to potentially play around our second chapter, but I could see the advantage of an extra Thopter. is not going to pay the tax, so they have plans for their one remaining mana. And yeah, I guess if they can cast an instant in our turn, they can grow the team to survive the second chapter, although then they'll have to pay the tax again, so they're just going to kill Sentinel now. And then we can still tap two artifacts to kill Soulscar Mage, Portable Hole Balmore, take it from there. And Shadow Spear is going to be helpful in racing, especially with Reign of Truth. So, sure. Actually, wouldn't mind drawing a land next turn, so we can play Reign of Truth and equip Shadow Spear. Put on just casting Guidance without a wizard in place, so they're a creature light. Which is uh, good for us, although probably means they have some instant speed removal to kill whatever creature we try and equip. Alright, they found a Symmetry Sage, and sadly our land comes into play tapped. I guess we'll just animate the bridge since I'm not going to use all my mana. And then I can still Reign of Truth. And uh, I guess I'll Diversify. Hit for 10. I 
And then next turn we'll have the mana for another Reign of Truth and equip Shadow Spear. But we have to be careful to play around instant speed interaction. Another Guidance, this time with a creature in play, so they get to dig pretty deep. At least we're not too likely to die this turn if they only have three mana left. Arcanist plus a Reckless Charge, I guess, would be the scariest sequence. And yeah, there it is. Arcanist plus Reckless Charge, so they can replay a Reckless Rage out of the graveyard. Or a Reckless Charge, but then we can chump Symmetry Sage with Ornithopter. And then our point stepped out, so we can hit them back, potentially with a Shadow Spear. So I think that still leaves us in an okay spot. So our opponent has to leave Symmetry Stage on defense. Goes for Mentor Guidance for card advantage. But Shadow Spear will give our creature Trample, so the Sage is only going to soak up so much damage. If our opponent gets to untap here, we're in trouble, because they'll get to see a lot of cards. So we really need to make this count. Take six, down to five. And then equip Shadow Spear. Play another Reign of Truth. And if my math is correct, this should do it. Opponent can soak up three, still take eleven. And there we have it, close one against Wizards, but once again, we got it done, and this time even without a Foundry. Alright, so we got to see our Thopter Tribal deck in action, and the deck seems quite powerful, and also happens to have a good matchup against Blue-Red Wizards, which according to the stats on Untapped is the most popular deck in Historic, and also the second highest win rate deck in the format, just behind Thopter Tribal, so it seems like a pretty well positioned deck at the moment. Now, that being said, the Thopter Tribal deck did feel a little bit less consistent than Blue Red Wizards. It does rely pretty heavily on a few key cards, like Foundry, to win its games, and the Wizards deck doesn't really need to draw any individual card, even though Dreadheart Arcanist, you can make the argument, is the key card in that deck. But just in general, playing the deck, it does feel like you'd need to mulligan more aggressively to find those powerful openers, which the Wizards deck doesn't really struggle with, so keep that in mind as well when selecting your deck. But yeah, the stats don't lie according to Untapped. The Thopter Tribal is just the highest win rate deck at the moment. Part of it might also be that opponents are unfamiliar with Foundry, attacking their creatures into a potential 4-4, so that will potentially also change over time as the deck becomes more popular. But for now, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.